All right, so this is the second video on gas laws, and today we're going to talk about the combined gas law and the ideal gas law. All right, so the combined gas law is when we take all four of these laws and we combine them together into one. And so if I look at them and I wanted to make a law out of this, I would say pressure is always in the numerator, and so I've got P1, and then volume is also in the numerator, so V1, over N1, because it's always in the bottom, and so is temperature, T1. And so we end up with this. Oh, what happened? P1 V1 over N1 T1 is equal to P2 V2 over N2 T2. And what I notice about this that's different about the other laws that we've talked about is that nothing is constant in this. Everything is changing. We have a P1 here and a P2 here. We have V1 and V2, N1 and N2, and T1 and T2. So they're all changing values. Um, if they were not all changing values, we make it smaller, put it up here in the corner. So let's say that moles stays constant. If moles were to stay constant, then they would cancel out on both sides, and you would end up with this equation. P1 over V1, or P1 times V1 over T1, is equal to P2 times V2 over T2. And this is more commonly used as the combined gas law. And in this one, the moles are staying constant. That looks terrible. So N isn't changing, so it cancels out on both sides. If the temperature uh, wasn't changing as well, so I'm just going to highlight it so that you can see what I'm talking about. If this didn't change, then it would cancel out, and you would end up with Boyle's Law. You'd end up back with this one, right? And if um, pressure was staying constant along with moles, so pressure in moles stays constant, we end up with Charles' Law, this one. So it's very easy to see that um, you can get all of the laws that we talked about yesterday from the combined gas law. So whatever stays constant gets canceled out. So you don't have to really know all these combined gas laws as long as you understand the relationships between all of the different um, substances that are changing. So let's uh, look at a couple of examples of this. The first one, we've got a 5 liter air sample at a temperature of negative 50 degrees and has a pressure of 107 kilopascals. What will the new pressure be if the temperature is raised to 102 degrees and the volume expands to 7 liters? So I'm going to write down everything that I know. And first, I know that my first volume is 5 liters. And my first temperature is negative 50 degrees. Remember, everything always has to be in Kelvin. So this is going to be 223 Kelvin. And then my first pressure is 107 kilopascals. And then that's it. Um, so moles is staying constant. So I know that my law involved here is going to be the PV over T. Okay, and then I've got V2 is 7 liters, and T2 is going to be 375 Kelvin because it's 102 Celsius, and I add three, uh, 273 to it. And I'm looking for my second pressure. I don't know what that is. So if I plug all of these values here into, um, into the combined gas law, what I end up getting, or what it looks like, is 107 kilopascals times 5 liters divided by 223 Kelvin is equal to P2 times 7 liters divided by 375 Kelvin. And so whatever you have to do to solve this, the easiest way for you, whatever it is, you, you solve it that way. And I'm just going to cross multiply and divide. So I'm going to take this 
times each other and this all times each other and write them down. Um, if you can do this without cross multiplying and dividing, however you want to do it algebraically is fine as long as you can find the right value for, uh, for pressure. And so down here I end up getting 200,625 and my units are going to be kPa, liters, and Kelvin. So I get kPa times a liter times a Kelvin, right? <laughs> because they didn't cancel out. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here on the left side, and I get 1561 liter times a Kelvin times P2. And I want to get what P2 is, so I'm going to divide both sides by 1561 liter Kelvin. And my liters and Kelvin end up canceling out here. So I end up with kilopascals, which is what I wanted to find because I wanted to find pressure. And so my pressure is going to be equal to 129 kilopascals. Whoops. And so that's my answer. All right, let's try one more. I have an unknown volume of gas at a pressure of 380 torr. So I've got a pressure equal to 380 torr and a temperature equal to 325 torr or Kelvin, I'm sorry. If I raise the pressure to 1.2 atm, so this is a second pressure, and decrease the temperature to 320 Kelvin and measure the final volume to be 48 liters, so this is my second volume, what was the initial volume of gas? So I'm looking for V1. So I'm going to plug all these in. I don't have any kind of um, moles changing or anything, so again it's going to be PV over T. And so my first pressure is 380 torr. And my first volume is what I'm looking for. And my first temperature is 325 Kelvin. Now when I go to the other side, what I notice is that my, um, my unit for pressure here is ATM, but my unit for pressure here is TOR, and they have to cancel out if I'm going to actually find liters, right? If I want to find a, a unit left for liters. So I've got to convert my 1.2 ATM to TOR. And I know that 1 atm is equal to 760 torr. So if I take 1.2 times 760, I get 912 torr. And so I'm going to plug that value in into for P2. And I've got 48 liters divided by 320 Kelvin. So again, I'm going to cross multiply and divide um, this times this times this. And I get 121,600 um, Tor Kelvin. And all of that is times V1. And that's going to be equal to, so that was doing this. And then the next one is when I'm going to go that way. So I'm going to take 48 times 912 times 325. And I end up getting um, 14,227,000 200. And my units here are Tor times a liter, times a Kelvin. So I, I didn't really leave myself enough room there. Let me see if I can make some room. Um, all right, so I just had to uh, rewrite it down here. And so this is the exact same thing uh, down here that was written up here. Okay, so now that I have uh, these multiplied out, right, this times that, 
and they're written down here on the bottom. I'm going to divide both sides by 1, 2, 1, 600 tor Kelvin and divide this side by the same thing to keep it equal on both sides. And so this cancels out. And then uh, Kelvin and tor end up canceling out. So I end up with liters. So it's really important that we had converted the ATM to tor because if we hadn't, then over here we would have had ATM and they wouldn't have canceled out. Okay, so if I actually do this in my calculator, I end up getting for V1 117. So let me move everything up a little bit. kind of got jacked up, but that's okay. So V1 is equal to 117 liters. All right. Okay, so uh, these numbers can get very big because obviously uh, these are really big. If you know a different way to do it, by all means, go for it mathematically. Um, but if, if you need to use a proportion, please make sure you write out this side and you write out this side so that you don't accidentally divide by the wrong one. All right, so in other examples, you're not going to always have something change. And so that brings us to the next law, the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law is PV is equal to NRT. And um, this is also known as Pevnert. And so we've got pressure and volume and moles and temperature, but then we also have this new thing, R. And R is equal to um, several different things. It's the universal gas constant, and it's used in a lot of different uh, chemistry equations. And so there's a bunch of different values for it because they all have different units. And so uh, R can be 0 0.08206. And the units for that value are liter times an ATM over a mole Kelvin. And then we also have 62, whoops, 62.4. And that would be liters times millimeters of mercury or tor divided by mole Kelvin. And then we also have 8.314, and that one is um, liters times kilopascals divided by a mole Kelvin. And so those are the three that I'm going to give you. And if you notice, if you look at all three of these, the only thing that's different about them is their units for pressure. And if we were to rearrange Pevnert, the equation up here, to where it equals R, what we would do, we'd have PV equals NRT. And we want it to say R equals, so I'm going to divide both sides by NT, which would cancel out the N and T over here. And we get R is equal to PV over NT. And with that, we find that volume is in liters, pressure, I'm just going to use ATM, N is moles. Wow, that doesn't look like moles at all. Moles. <laughs> and T is in Kelvin, and so you end up with liter, ATM, mole, Kelvin. And so when you use those units, the R that you should be using is this one, because those are the units for that R. So the R that you use will be determined or will be, be used based on what your units of pressure are in. Now, you can convert everything to ATM and just use this R if that's easier for you. It doesn't really matter. Either way works. All right, so let's look at an example. Okay, it says, what pressure will be exerted by 0 0.450 moles of a gas at 25 degrees Celsius if it is contained in a 0 0.650 liter vessel? So in this problem, there is nothing changing. And so that means that everything is staying the same. Everything is constant. And so if everything is constant, then you use the ideal gas law. If you have more than one value for something, then you're going to use the combined gas law 
um, and l like what we've been doing. But since everything is constant here, I'm going to use Pubnert. And so remember that is PV equals NRT. Okay, so now if I plug those values in, um, we want to know what pressure is. And so I'm just going to use, uh, I'm going to find it in ATM. And then the volume is 0 0.650 liters. The moles, 0 0.450 moles. Um, the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, which is also uh, 298 Kelvin. And I'm going to plug those in to the equation. So I end up with P times 0 0.650 liters is equal to 0 0.450 moles times R. Now for my R value, since I have this pressure in ATM, I want to use the R value that has ATM in the units. So I have 0 0.08206, and that's going to be liter times an ATM over a mole Kelvin. And then my temperature is 298 Kelvin. Oh, Kelvin. Okay. So, um... Let me get rid of that. I'm going to fix this. Let's see. Squish it a little bit. So I've got 298 Kelvin. All right. So now if I look at this, Kelvin ends up canceling out. Moles ends up canceling out. And I'm going to multiply across here. And I end up getting... 11.004246, and the units that are left are liter ATM. All right, and that's going to be equal to P times 0 0.650 liters. And so to get P by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.650 liters. And then liters is going to cancel out. And I would end up with, let me move this up, pressure is equal to 16.9 ATM. Because that's the unit that I have left, so that's associated with whatever this 11.0. 0.04246 divided by 0 0.650 liters is. All right, so let's try another one. Okay, so I've got um, what volume will 12 grams of oxygen gas occupy at 5 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 52.7 kilopascals? So I've got a mass of 12 grams, and that's of oxygen, and I've got a temperature equal to 5 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be 278 Kelvin, and a pressure equal to 52.7 kilopascals, and I'm looking for a volume. And so since I don't have a second value for anything, that means nothing is changing. And if nothing is changing, I'm going to use PV equals NRT. And I have um, somewhere to put each of these values. I've got temperature and pressure, and I'm looking for volume. The only place I don't have is for this mass. But I do know there's a relationship between mass and moles. So if I can convert my mass, 12 grams of oxygen, into moles, then I can use that value in the Pubner equation. So um, there's 32 grams of O2 and one mole of O2. And that gives me 0.375 moles of oxygen. So I can use this in N. All right, so I'm going to plug everything into Pubnert, and my pressure is 52.7 kilopascals, 
and that's going to be times my volume, which is what I'm looking for. And then my N is going to be 0 0.375 moles of O2. And then my R, the R that I want to use is the one that has kilopascals in it. And so if you look at the notes, at the notes that you've hopefully taken while you watch this video, you have that the R will be 8.314 liter times a kilopascal over a mole times a kelvin and the temperature that we have is 278 kelvin and so if I go through and cancel all my units that I can cancel moles cancels with moles kelvin cancels with kelvin and we're left with liter kilopascals now I need to divide both sides by 52.7 kilopascals in order to isolate my variable and then kilopascals will cancel out as well. And I've just got to multiply 0.375 times 8.314 times 278 and then divide by 52.7. And I end up getting my volume, oops, my volume will be equal to 16.4 and that would be liters because that's the unit that's left over. So I hope that this helps you. Um, probably what's going to be the hardest thing is when all of these are mixed up together, being able to decipher what kind of problem you have and knowing what kind of equation that, to use. The best thing that I can tell you to do is look to see if you have two values of something. If you were to be given two values for temperature, then you'd know you'd have to use the combined gas law and maybe cancel out anything that's constant. If you only have one value for everything, then you're going to always be using PubNerd.